I want to talk to you about the kind of information that comes out of your muscles and what you can learn from it. I got into this because my parents ran a clinic that treated people with muscle-related problems. Um, when I was about 10, I got TMD, or lockjaw, and my father taught me how to reduce muscle loading in my jaw, and eventually this problem went away and it hasn't returned since. So ever since a pretty young age, I've been aware of the importance of how we use our bodies, how we use our muscles. When my father passed away, I looked for a way to build on his work to expand it outside of the medical field, because I feel that there is tremendous value here that applies to a number of different areas. So when a muscle contracts, it generates a raw signal that looks something like this. Um, this signal is amplified and filtered. If we could go live to the iPad, please. And when you flex, there you go, it tense, it goes up, relax, it goes down. That's the end result. So just for point of reference, uh, these units are in microvolts RMS, and a resting muscle is at two microvolts. In some contexts, you want to engage your muscles as much as possible if you're strength training, for example. In other contexts, if you're working in front of your computer, you want to minimize your muscle expenditure. So if you type on a keyboard or laptop, um, and you are extending far away from your body, that uh, results in levels of about 80 to, one, to 150. And uh, I think that was the previous slide. And if you have it in and close to your lap, it's about 10 microvolts or less. So the position of your hands makes a huge difference in the amount of muscle loading in your upper trapezius muscles when you're at work. And this was showing uh, bending over, lifting a 30-pound weight, doing it improperly, uh, lifting it like this, and measuring the mid-back muscles, um, and then doing it properly, keeping your spine nice and straight. And the mid-back muscles are significantly less stressed in that situation. So the heart is obviously also a muscle, so one application of this technology is, is a strapless continuous heart rate monitor. These are adhesive, so you just uh, stick them on. And we made a more intuitive interface for sports applications. So the circle in the center is the speedometer kind of looking thing. That is the heart rate. The number above it is work done by the muscles cumulatively. And the bar graph on the left is also work done. And in the next video, you'll see fast time running and the work done, the, the green graph will start to slowly fill. It's important to have work done goals and not just goals that are based on speed or distance. If you have two people who want to get into running, one's 100 pounds and one's 200 pounds, you can't ask them to run the same amount of time or the same amount of distance. The heavier person's muscles are going to work a lot harder and their risk of fatigue and injury is much greater. So with a work done limit, you can turn them around at the 50% marker. This shows 30 minutes of running on a treadmill. These are, this is the output of your quadriceps muscles. So you can actually see the way muscle fatigue can be quantified and objectively measured. This is the same run two days in a row with insufficient recovery time. So with only 24 hours of recovery, the first graph may not be clear. The scale is about 1,000 microvolts. The second one is 500. So you can actually uh, quantitatively measure how recovered you are from one day to another and figure out what the ideal way to exercise on that given day should be. There are more advanced applications of this, too. I figured out that if you have a given speed and you vary your stride rate within that speed, you can figure out what stride rate is optimal to minimize your energy burn over time. So if you're running a marathon, you want to delay the onset of fatigue. You want to burn as little energy as possible. For me, that was 130 beats per minute at six and a half miles an hour. And this is what the early onset of a knee injury can look like, um, output of your quadriceps muscles. So this is a left side knee injury resulting in right side compensation. So one application of the technology is an early warning system for injuries as they develop. So my focus so far has been on workplace safety and running. Eventually, I'd like to see this technology expand into other kinds of sports, from football to yoga, and also other kinds of applications like prosthetics control, robotics controllers, um, video game controllers, potentially even MIDI input devices to create music from the movement of our bodies. Can you go live on the sound, please? So what I've got here is this one here is linked to, put this down. All right. All right. All right. Um, 
So I'd like to thank all the people that worked on this with me. <laughs> my team, um, Clay, Brian, and Doug, my partners, Violetta and John, and of course my intrepid research assistant, Athena, pictured here. <laughs> demonstrating proper use of the sensors. Points out the heart, muscle, muscle, and heart. That's it. Thank you very much. <laughs>